I wanna live and breathe. I wanna be part of the human race. Oh, hello, and welcome back to the Blackfoot Book Club and the Essential Film Reviews Collection. And I bring you from 2021, June, directed by Denis Villeneuve. Long-term readers of my deliberately non-spoiler film articles that ramble around a film rather than ruining and spoiling them will attest that I've recently watched a Denis Villeneuve film from nearly a decade ago that's based on a non-existent film that I've clearly made up. So perhaps you shouldn't be here for a precise record and deep dive into this, his 10th all-time feature-length film. I believed his 2013 psychological drama Prisoners to be set within a lighthouse and nothing like the actual film he actually created. I've accounted for my liking but not loving of 2015 Sicario, my unabashed love for Arrival a year later before, a year later still but based in the year of 2049, he created a worthy addition to the Blade Runner mythos. So June should have been an easy sell but I watched 45 minutes of his latest creation a few months ago and with my disinterest growing I switched off. I'm a heathen and a letdown to the film fan community I know and combined with my inability to write and appraise science fiction films without filling paragraphs with vacuous dross such as it is a beautiful film perhaps I'm not the authority you should turn to on this film but it is a beautiful film. The problem is a personal one and that is that I'm simply not a fan. It is a beautiful film. Sorry. No doubt about that, and with delightful echoes of the misty stillness surrounding the alien spaceship in Arrival. There's a brilliant dark shadow inspired scene that reminded me immediately of Colonel Kurtz and Francis Ford Coppola's Opus to Madness Apocalypse Now, and the opening 45 minutes that I've now rewatched have a shadowy, claustrophobic feel of a Tim Burton film. The touching down of spacecrafts are shot in close up, a la the Terminator or Alien, you have the one reference and others to the Matrix, and the film is soaked to the skin in obvious links to the George Lucas behemoth Star Wars. From the lame and simple theme of good versus evil, you also have the link back to a central warrior saviour, a god amongst men, the divine right of family rule, the receiver of training from an elder and the speaker of many tongues in secretive languages against the backdrop of an outer world of empires, a ruling class, infighting, warring factions and the harvesting of a planet's resources. Here the resource is spice and without it empires crumble in the sand. I wish I'd seen June at the cinema and on the glorious big screen that we all love. I liked it, but I have no real reason for loving it, despite some strong central performances from an ensemble cast of actors and actresses of whom I cherish their cinematic and dramatic skills. Oscar Isaac will forever be the struggling, put-upon singer-songwriter, crashing from one wrong turn to another in the Coen Brothers' brilliant Inside Lewin Davis in 2013, or the creepy loner in Alex Garland's Ex Machina a year later, rather than a Star Wars character or head of a family dynasty here and passer of the flame to his young son. Isaac is good, but his screen son, Timothy Chalamet, is even better, and he has to be. Aided by mystical powers, secret languages and the training, coaching and guidance of an elder, veteran Josh Brolin being typically grizzled and brilliant, we see the film politically, spiritually and often humanly via his eyes as well as those from an ostensible lover in waiting portrayed by Zendaya. Rebecca Ferguson impresses again as family matriarch, Dave Bautista crosses over from the Guardians of the Galaxy to simmer thunderously, Jason Momoa brings a smiling humanity and two final character portrayals that must figure prominently in part two of this two-part science fiction epic must fall to the unrecognisable Stellan Skarsgård as this franchise's Emperor Palpatine and the brilliant Javier Bardem as a vaunted and respected tribal leader. For there is a part two, with a release date scheduled for the 17th of November 2023, and as Zendaya states with this film's final line, this is only the beginning, and perhaps the start of another Hall of Oscars in addition to the six Academy Awards 
that fell the way of June out of the 10 overall nominations this year. Best achievements in sound, visual effects, production design, film editing, cinematography and Hans Zimmer's original music score all won golden statuettes for a film that looks, feels and sounds like a beautiful film. I just didn't love it. I'm aware of the mythos surrounding the creation of the David Lynch film in 1984 and the subsequent documentary of its creation as well as the highly regarded book upon which all of these have been used as the basis for the interpretations and creations. I just found Villeneuve's creation beautifully befuddling, slow and uninteresting when stored and static and, as you've gathered from the rambling introduction above, I was rather more interested in the links deliberately or fancifully imagined by me to other films and franchises from past and present. But I will be seeing part two on the cinema screen as there is only one place to see a creation of this spectacular magnitude and that's on the biggest cinema screen you can find. And we're six weeks away as I record this now and I will be seeing it on the very biggest screen that I can find. And this was June from 2021, directed by Denis Villeneuve, brought to you by Stephen Blackford, writer and reader of pointless but spoiler-free film reviews since 2012. And I'll leave you in peace and in solidarity. And I thank you so, 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 so much for watching. Peace, everyone.